let's get started. I wanted to have our second talk about League of Silent Flight. So we had a talk about 18 months ago about the same subject, but it, um, it's important to all of us to, to learn about some history of our club and also this, this important organization. And I was, uh, the reason I brought it up the first time is I was interested in an alternative to the contest because I kept losing contests and I thought, there must be a better way to improve my skills and uh, to show my improvement. And so I've always been interested in this, and I just never quite had the, you know, momentum from the club to kind of keep going with it. So I, I keep bringing these talks back so we can kind of learn about another aspect of our uh, hobby that I think we'd find pretty exciting. So, um, and the other thing I want to mention is we started. Bob, maybe you can spend just 30 seconds telling us about the history, the, the beginning of it. Well, I, the thing is, I don't know much about the history. I only know the name of one person that was involved with it, and that was Lee Gray. Spelled his, spelled his first name with an L, just L-E. And the nucleus of the idea of LSF did start here in, the, in uh, South Bay Soaring Society. How it spread from there, because it's obviously now headquartered closer to the East Coast, but it became a, nas you know, a nationwide program that was pretty doggone popular. And so popular out here that we geared our contest to it. Which is why we went back to this format where everybody's flying the same task. Because the LSF rules in the contest is everybody must fly the same task to count up to uh, at least 20 people when you're looking for contest wins. You have to, or contest points, you have to have at least 20, 20 people in the contest. So we're, hope, we're hoping to get back to that level because we used to fly all of our contests as LSF, LSF content, type contests. And also the first level five, which is the top achievement in LSF, was achieved by an SBSS member, John Baxter, mm -hmm. who actually is the person who attempted to teach me how to fly in various sundry ways, which were rather amusing. He's international too. Yeah, it is, it's international. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's worldwide now. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. We have Greg and Bob talking about it. And what we'll do is start with um, Greg's talk, and then Bob, you can backfill and add and, and interrupt each other and all you want. So let's keep going. All right, what I thought I'd go through is briefly how I went about actually getting to level five. Um, what, what kind of planes I flew, what kind of strategies I used, and kind of how I got there, and give some people some tips if they want to kind of go on that path. Um, level one, this is a relatively easy task. An experienced pilot can do this in a few days. Um, it involves a five minute thermal, a 15 minute slope, and five spot landings. And on one through four, you can substitute a second thermal flight for the slope flight in case you live in a place where there is no slope. Um, on level five, you have to do the slope. Um, I did this with a dope and tissue covered hand launch model and a strip rubber high start. Um, you could do this with almost any model. Um, most of it I did in Texas and Florida. I built a plane in, in Texas. That This here was the first copy. This is another copy, a better picture of it. This is a Zephyr. You can get the plans in model aviation. It's a beautiful flying airplane. It's one of my favorites of all time. Um, that one I think was 12 ounces because it had a full size radio in it. This one I think was nine. Um, <clears throat> you, you can be quite clever. I mean, trying to figure out ways to do this. I used a cement wall for the slope on the, on the 15 minute flight and went down to the beach. There's no slope at the beach in Florida in that area, but they did have like a a wall, so I just tossed the plane and flew back and forth across the wall. It was only about eight feet high, but for a plane like that, it worked. Wait, so, could you comment on the distance of the spot landings? Because it's I got I got the specifics okay. of each category, okay. but also yeah, it gets more difficult as you yeah. as you move. And I got the details. Okay, okay. next one. Level two involves a 15 minute thermal, a one hour slope, and 10 spot landings in a smaller radius. Um, and then you have to go to six contests and get a, either a place or 3,000 points based on the, the point scheme they have in there. 
Most of mine I did with a plane called a two meter scooter designed by Leanne Kincaid. It was done mostly on the Florida and Texas contest circuits. Um, it's a plane similar to a Sagita 600. Uh, I believe the plan, actually, yeah, the plans of that, this came out of the 1983, I think, model aviation. You, you, you can look it up, it's, a, it's in the plan. It's a great flying airplane um, if you want like a two meter, something a step up from one of those uh, pre-built things they sell these days, or yes. just a gentle lady. Um, it's actually a pretty decent flying airplane. And again, this one wasn't too hard, it just takes a little bit of time. <coughs> Next one. Level three starts to get a little bit more difficult. You need a 30 minute thermal, two hour slope, and then a 1K goal and return. Um, and, and again, six more contests with more points. Most of this I did with a two meter Mariah. That's an airplane I actually owned until about six months ago. I've actually flown it at, at SPSS contests. It was a great flying two meter. Um, if you've got a decent area, you can actually do a 1K goal and return with that. Just get it up as high as you can see it, get in the car, drive down the road, turn around and come back, and you could pull it off. It's, I'm not gonna say it's easy, but you can do it. Um, if you wanted to do it with a big XC model like some of the ones I have, I think you could do it without leaving the field. Um, they've, since this came out, they've invented GPS and just put the GPS in the plane, launch it, thermal it up high as you can go. Fly as far as ways you can see it, come back and read it off the of GPS, I can almost guarantee you go more than <laughs> Great. Okay. There, it, is there a, I believe there's a, a thermal substitute for the two hour slope also? There yeah. is, up until level four, yeah. you can substitute a second one on a different day. Yeah. And a 30 minute thermal on a good day in a good location with a decent airplane is not too hard to get. Um, you can do it. It starts to get a little bit more challenging though. Okay, the next one. Oh, are you, you're quite a bit less than two meters high in that picture. Is it, are you young in that picture, or is that you? Uh, I was fully grown there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 22, maybe? Yeah. Okay. I, I'll point out that the classic goal in return, we were flying Curtis Field, which was Curtis Field, oh. Peterson High School, and back. That course still exists, if anybody's interested. Push you across Morris Express. Oh. Level four, it starts to get more difficult. Um, this one involves a one hour thermal, a four hour slope, a 2K goal and return, and six more contests. Um, when I did this, I remember I had several flights in the 50 to 55 minute range <laughs> where I just it was almost there and the lift ran out and, and I couldn't get it. Um, most of that was done with the 2 meter Mariah I showed in the other picture, a 3 meter scooter, which is a bigger version than that 2 meter that I showed, and a plane called a Texas 2 meter that a friend of mine designed uh, in Texas. I built it in Florida and flew it for about a year. Uh, it was an interesting airplane and I used it for contest work. Um, the goal return was done with another scooter, this yellow airplane right here. Uh, I took the standard design, cut it out of foam, did it with flaps and ailerons. Uh, I had no Vario, but I did have Brian Agnew driving and calling for me when I did it, so you know, it really helps to have an experienced pilot coaching you through this. It makes the task a lot easier. Um, and again, he's one of the top guys in the world and someone I'd want on my team any day. Um, this one probably took me a year or two to collect all this. Next one. Okay, level five. Uh, up to level four, the tasks are not all that hard. You, and you can do it all with stock equipment. Anything you buy off the shelf, you could do a level four with. Um, the contest work can be done with points only. You don't have to win anything up to level four. So you can just keep going to the contest circuit, racking up points, racking up points, racking up points. Eventually you're gonna get it, even if you don't win or place. Um, level five. Um, it requires a higher skill level. You're, you're going to have to do some kind of customized equipment for some of the tasks. Off the shelf stuff is not going to work. Um, and what I would say is a large amount of stubbornness and determination. You 
just have to keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. It involves a two hour thermal, an eight hour slope, a 10K goal and return, and six contests with three wins, and I think 12,000 points. So some of these are pretty formidable tasks. They're not as hard now as they were when this came out, because as I'll show, a lot of the a lot of technology's gotten better. Okay, the next one. Are you gonna talk about the eight-hour slope? And yeah, I'll, I'll go through all yeah. that. Uh, I'm gonna go through the tasks one by one for the okay. for here. Two-hour thermal. This one only took me a few tries to get it. I had a specially built XC model, uh, the first one I made back in 1990 or something like that. It's a copy of Wiley's Revenge, Joe Wirtz's airplane. Um, it's the white one in the in the picture, the tallest one. It's an Epler 374 with a fuselage I got from uh, Jim Ferris in Texas. Uh, I built that in a one bedroom apartment in Gainesville, Florida. That's the Gainesville field. It's, it was very, very crude, but you know that design could tolerate it. Um, I do believe my Vario either failed or someone else was on my channel for that flight, and I had to do it, you know, by eye. Um, it was done in Florida at the um, Wellington Fields. A really nice location, very open, nothing around. Lots of mixed cumulus. It was in the middle of summer. Um, and if I remember correctly, it wasn't that hard. It just it was one of those days when it just happened. Uh, you know, I got up cloud base and just flew around. You could bounce from cloud to cloud, it wasn't that bad. I had made a few attempts up to that point. You know, you get an hour, you get an hour and 20 minutes, an hour and 40 minutes. But in this day, just everything clicked and it worked. Next one. Okay, the eight hour slow. <clears throat> this one can be a bit of a challenge. Um, I scouted around a lot of places before it all came together. Um, it was done with an Oli 2 that was built stock. I did it on my first attempt. I used four alkaline C cells under the wing. I had seven D cells on the transmitter. It was an Airtronics four channel PCM transmitter, a really old one. Um, nothing complicated about it at all. You just unplug the battery in there and you solder up a pack and tape it on the back, wraps and wraps of electrical tape. And it weighs a few pounds, but you're sitting down most of the time anyway. I did it at Cape Cod, Massachusetts. I was living in, in uh, New Jersey at the time, and uh, my friend Alan, who's gone on a lot of these adventures with me, um, set this up. He was a uh, visiting professor at um, Brandeis that year. And I, I drove up there, and we went out to the dunes, and there was a mostly a crosswind on the slope. It started out kind of straight on, and I, I threw out as soon as we um, had the wind and it was enough to keep it up and then the wind swung to the side it was probably more than 45 degrees of the slope but there was a little bump on the end that allowed me to just kind of go 50 feet forward and backward 50 feet left and right and stay in that area and it, it just blew until the end of my eight hours um, there's a, the, the third guy was uh, I think his name's Lincoln Ross you see him show up on the thermal board every once in a while he's still pretty active um, you know, technically it wasn't that hard. The batteries all lasted. You got to make sure all your solder joints are real good on the batteries, and you know, pick them with a knife and make sure they don't pop off, and all your wiring's good. Um, the hard part is just sitting there for eight hours and dealing with the spots in your eyes and the dehydration and the heat and, and all that. Yeah, no, no potty breaks. No potty breaks. But if you manage your water, you can make it through a day sweating. To the end. AMA and FAI allow potty breaks for records. LSF don't. It doesn't. Although I, I have known people that take potty breaks, if you have a really stable airplane and one free hand. <laughs> 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 yeah, That's why I wouldn't know. No, you just walk outside. Oh, okay. Um, I have one friend who's failed this three times now with only two. The first time he used two different transmitters that were different. Same frequency, but a different model. The elevator ended up being on the throttle stick with no spring. He just couldn't fly it that way, you know, while I was charging the other one. And it was it was heartbreaking to watch because he got, it, there was no crash or anything. He just slowly got behind the good lift band. Oh boy. And I watched him over a period of five or 10 minutes just slowly get pushed down to the beach. And he could not get forward enough to get it back to the lift band. And that was halfway through. 
Uh, the second time there was no wind, and the third time he had a fanny pack full of batteries with a cord that went to his transmitter, and he stood up and pulled the cord out. <laughs> and by the time he figured it out and got it back together, the plane was way downwind and not recoverable. So the lesson there is make sure you're, and I actually went out with a guy and did another level five attempt at Parker with an Aquila Grande, it was my Aquila Grande. Everything looked okay. There must have been a bad solder joint somewhere in the pack because about halfway through the thing just lost control and spiraled in. And I, you know, it crashed, so to this day I don't know what happened. It didn't work when we got back. Um, but you, you, the lesson learned is, you know, get a big battery pack and be done with it. Make sure your radio equipment is very reliable. Use twice as thick of wire as you think you need. Solder everything nice and hot with flux. Pick it with a knife and make sure it doesn't come off. Wrap it double with electrical tape. Don't worry about a couple extra ounces. And test everything before you go out. If there's any question about it, replace it. Because you're not going to want to go out and do this again. Um, and then I also witnessed Bill Curry's eight-hour flight. He used a topaz and a vision transmitter. I believe he put a big lipo pack on the back of it. I'm not exactly sure. Either that or he had two identical visions, and he, and he um, switched in between. You can do that if you want it. It works. Um, that was done at Coyote. So it can be done at Coyote. In the middle of the summer, it should be no problem if anyone wants to do it. OK, next slide. <coughs> 10K goal and return. And I, like I said, say here, I chased this one for years and years and years. I tried it in Florida, I tried it in New York, I tried it um, out here a few times. This was not easy. Um, I finally got it at Cal Valley. I was using the Wiley's Revenge copy that I got the two hour with. Um, and again, my Vario was in the other plane. I had, I had another plane that I built that I thought was better. And I took it out and launched and launched and launched and launched and launched. I couldn't get anywhere. And I said, fine, we're going back to the old one with no Vario. Thermal the thing up, went down the road at Cal Valley, got down to telephone pole height, picked up a thermal, took it out again, and came back. Um, you know, it, it's funny, like, when it actually happens, you always end up going over the finish line with a couple thousand feet extra by the time you're done. Because it's, it's, it, it ends up being easy by the end, usually. Um, but I, if you have a Vario, I'd recommend using it. Um, I've aided uh, Lex Myrock, Jay Decker, and John Erickson to all to do their 10Ks, all with my airplanes, um, all with working Varios. Um, the plane we used for Jay Decker's was that um, one over there. That was number six, I believe. That was a really nice airplane. The first time we did it, the Vario tube, the Total Energy Probe, got turned around. The Vario wasn't working right. and made it halfway and he didn't get it. So we came back, we fixed that, he took off, um, got it up high, I don't think he got below 1,500 feet on the whole thing and he came back to the field with 1,000 feet of extra altitude. It turned out to be easy. Um, John Erickson, we used this airplane here, which is the number three. It's a copy of the copy of Wiley's Revenge. It had 12 inch record, Airplane 374. Again, it was very crude, very simple, but very easy to fly. And that one, I think we went down and back, and it really wasn't a problem. The time I went with uh, Lex Mirop, uh, we had my number seven plane. He got it up high, it was blowing a little bit. We got in the trunk of my Corolla, which was the vehicle we were using at the time. Got to the start gate, it had gotten dusty and far enough downwind that he lost sight of it. Oh, wiped it out. The near the end of its useful life anyway, I wasn't too worried about it. We got all the components back. Put everything in that airplane, went out, and we got it. How long was the flight? <clears throat> Time? Yeah. Usually these go about an hour, hour and 20. I've seen Brian Agnew with an airplane like this white one right here do it three times in one day. Every time was faster than the last one. I think the last one was under 30 minutes. I remember seeing him in the trunk of a Honda Accord going by with the plane like right on the cloud base, going like 50, 60 miles an hour, and he's going, go, 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 go. <laughs> um, I know of one pilot, his name's Tim McDowell. He was, he was the hotshot in Florida 20 or 30, maybe 40 years ago. I don't know, it was a while ago. 
he did this with an Aquila Grande that had an Ace Vario in it. Um, he was a very good pilot, but I will say that could be very challenging. It would take a lot of patience to do it, um, but, but he did it. So again, that's, that's the old style before they had these things, and people did it back then, but it was not easy. Next slide. Six contest wins with three, six contests with three wins and 12,000 points, and unless you're really good, you're gonna end up going to a lot more than six contests to get this. <laughs> um, most of mine I did in Florida and the Eastern Soaring League. Um, I picked up my three wins, I think one or two in Florida and one in one island. Um, I used two airplanes called a Phoenix and a Mariah. The Mariah was the one I showed the two meter from before, and that's the Phoenix there, which was a bigger version of that. Um, came out of a kit that came out of Florida. It was a nice flying plane at the time. This can take a while. It's challenging to find a contest with more than 20 pilots, because it, when you have more than 20 pilots, it usually draws a handful of guys at the level of Bob McGowan or you know that level, and you've got to beat all of them. Um, so, the other tasks, the 2 hour, the 8 hour, the 10k, are all getting easier because there are better planes, there are better batteries, there are better varios, and there are more skilled witnesses to help. If you've got two guys on a cross country team that have already done this, and they're telling you how to get the 10k, on a good day you're going to get it. If you, have, if, you, if you have it in you to go high enough and are comfortable flying that far away and flying a big airplane, you're going to get it. Um, this task, the six contest wins, is getting harder because all the pilots are getting better and there are more of them to show up in each contest. Mm -hmm. I think that was it. No, there's one more. Why, why do this? Okay, it greatly increases your skill as a pilot, starting right from the beginning with the spot landing. You're going to find out how hard it is to put it in that little, little circle. Um, it gives you a benchmark of where you stand in relation to where you were, where your friends are, and, and where you want to be. It forces you to be more aware of the terrain and the conditions for completing the tasks. I mean, when, when, you're out, when you're trying to get the 10K, all of a sudden every driver in the car anywhere outside the city becomes, okay, where can I get from here to there, this 10K that's got a straight road, it's got a landing. <laughs> I mean, it's just constantly on your mind. Um, also slopes, you're looking for where does the wind blow? When does it start blowing? What's the day window? When does it shut off? What's the direction? How high is it? Stuff like that. Um, and if you get to the end, it puts you in an elite group of pilots. There's still, I think, less than 200 people who've done this. There's only a handful a year. I looked at it today. <coughs> you can do it. You could almost get 10K in the field and almost be good. Well, 10K? Well, no, you have to go. It's a straight line, 10K. Oh, and, okay. and, uh, and we, 10K and return. You have to get 10K away from where yeah. you launched, then you have to get back. It doesn't matter yeah. how you get there or how you get yeah. back. That's six miles. Yes, yeah, 6.2. Six, yeah. That's in my truck. That's how far Bob McGowan was away. Yeah. 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 I've actually I've actually gotten on my GPS, Bob McGowan, over a mile away from where we were in the oh, truck. Yeah. Now John Baxter did his two hour with a stock Magnum 12 airplane that was kitted by a uh, Soarcraft, 12 foot mm -hmm. span airplane, sometimes referred to as a frog because the fuselage is, has a low oval cross section. I don't know what he did his uh, full return with, he may have used the same airplane. You could do it, you got a 12 footer, you can do it. Yeah, you can did. do it with a sail air, you can do it. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Now his slope, I don't know. You can do that with the same airplane. Yeah, but, and he was a good slow pilot. You could do it with a gentle lady. Well, let me preface mine with the, with, with the, the story for the rest of us. First of all, you don't need 20 pilots. You don't need to win a contest with 20 pilots for the other levels. So uh, each one requires a different number of pilots. So it, level five does require, but we, we got to get one, two, three, and four first. <laughs> if you want to start with mine, son? Yeah. Let's Hey, thank you, Greg. Let's, let's I'll point out if you fly in a contest and make your times and your spot landings, you can use those towards LSF. Yeah. I mean, if you do a if you do a five minute in the contest, 
and get get your spot. Right. You get a twofer. You get a twofer. And you count all your spot lines, you just can't count the second thermal flight in the same day. Right. So I'm gonna, I took most of what I know about it, I knew a little bit about it, but this is a little bit more about the details of it. And uh, go to the next slide. Who the, the lead LSF is, and first of all, their website is not Liga Silent Flight, but it's silentflight.org. And that's where I got this information. So uh, it started as a program to uh, for sequential performance um, test by going to different levels. Uh, and there are five levels, you already know that. Each task must be signed off by a qualified witness, and I'll explain to you what a qualified witness is. And uh, tasks are based on different disciplines. And you have to submit a voucher for each level to LSF. And you have to, in order to level, I'll get to, go to the next slide. Um, so there are, these are the same for uh, each, each one. Some of them do not require uh, all of them, but you're talking about thermal duration, slope duration, spot landing, goal and return, and competition. Next slide. Uh, so here's the witness requirements. So you can have a witness, and he has to be over 21. This is for level one, and uh, not related to you. And that's uh, uh, and uh, uh, level, not, not related to the pilot. Level two is the same as level one. Net level three requires two witnesses, uh, and level four also requires two witnesses. Next slide. Uh, level five must have two witnesses each holding a level two or higher, and if not related to the pilot. Uh, approved witness for competitive requirements is uh, either the contest director or the official scorer. So the, when you're doing the, the contest part of it, the uh, contest director and uh, or the official scorer also has to sign, uh, or uh, needs to be one of the signers. Uh, the TD flight can substitute for an eight hours uh, for everything but the eight hour slope. Uh, a a TD flight can be substituted in all other levels except level five. And uh, level five, so, so think slope flight. So you do have to make an eight hour slope flight. You can't substitute uh, a slope flight for any, uh, for this, uh, for level five, which you can for one, two, uh, three, and four. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, okay, TD flight, uh, maximum tow length is 300 meters, and we're usually under that. Uh, you can't tow a plane up, um, and uh, you're looking for primarily uh, thermal activity, so you can't go to a slope and, and achieve your thermal uh, uh, tasks. Uh, and the landing must be within 200 meters of the launch point. I think, again, that's, that's usually a problem for us when we're doing a contest, certainly. And if you substitute a slope flight, it can't be done on the same day. We've already mentioned that. Next slide. Um, you, can, you can actually do a tow line uh, on the slope. Uh, that will give you a little extra altitude to get kicked off with. Um, and you, in some locales, that may be... Uh, a, a necessary thing because the slope may be at higher levels. Like I'm thinking Davenport, although Davenport's pretty good down low too. Um, you can use wave, um, and you have to land 200 meters from the launch point, just like a TD. And the precision spot landing must be made uh, using a tow line of oh. Seventy-five meters. No short high starts. Uh, that's right. I'm sorry. That's for TD. Uh, we're talking about slope right now. We're talking TD. Um, so no. You, and again, like in the contest, you can't lose any parts or land in vertical. It doesn't count. Next slide. Um, goal return is a TD flight, so you can't do that on the slope. Uh, you may lose it. Use a tow line winch. You must fly over the launch point before commencing to goal. So you. You fly out, you have to fly back over the launch area and then head out. Uh, and it's a straight line distance is uh, how it's measured. And you have to return to the point of launch. Next slide. Um, competition requirements. Okay, that for level two, you only need five participants. And I'll get into particulars of what that means. There's alternatives to that. 
So 5, 10, 15, and 20 for the, the first four, uh, the, for the five club, four levels of competition. There's no comp competitive component to uh, level one. Um, so each, and each contest must have three rounds or more. So, so, so everybody has a chance to score. Next slide. Um, so 50% of the contest must adhere to at least one of the following. Now, I don't know what the other 50%, I didn't really quite get that. Maybe you can make up your own rules, have your own contest. Uh, but uh, these are the five, uh, this is for both thermal and slope. You have to have a duration component, a distance component, a speed component, an aerobatic component, or an altitude component. Not all of those, but at least one of those. Next slide. Um, okay, this is how you compute it. And we're going to, besides that, Bob and I is going to work on that somewhere. I'm, I'm not sure how the winner uh, gets uh, 312 points. Um, that's the person that's uh, going for the, that's where you start with. So if you look at the bottom calculation right off the get go, it's 312 points. That's how many points you're assigned for that contest. And uh, then you take uh, the winner's points and divide it into that, and you multiply by 100, and then you take the participant, the number of, let's see, uh, one plus the number of uh, participants that you beat. That, that, you beat. that you beat, and then you end up with a number. And that's how the points are assigned, which will mean something to you when we get to one of the other slides. Uh, next slide. Oh, Lord, that yeah, <laughs> yeah. So here's the level one thermal duration. We've already gone through most of this. There's no competition component, and um, uh, there's no cross-country goal and return requirements. So it's a five, five minute duration, 15 minute launch, and the spot landing is a three meter or less. It's about 10 feet. It's not 10 feet, it's three meters. <laughs> it's about 10 feet. It's about 10 feet, okay. I, I convert <laughs> the landing tapes if anybody's interested. <laughs> okay. Next slide. Level two is 15, uh, slope, slope duration one hour, uh, and you can alternately do a one hour TD flight. Again, not the same day you do the other, your other thermal duration 15 minute flight. And the spot landing is uh, 10 landings of a meter and a half or less. Still no goal in return, but now that this is where the, the, the competition enters into the equation. You have to have at least six contests, you have to place second or better, or or three thousand points, and they are derived from the calculations that I showed you in the slide. Next slide. Now we're thirty minutes to our slope, or to our TV <coughs> flight. Uh, no spot landing requirements here. Uh, I think that's done. Uh, goal and return. I like to think in terms of miles. So it means the most to me. So that's that. 5,000 feet a mile, that's about 3,000 feet. So that's probably pretty doable. Uh, competition, six contests again, and second place with night or better, or 4,500 points. Next slide. Level four, this is uh, getting a little difficult here. <laughs> One hour duration, thermal duration, a lot of us have done that, I think. Slope duration, four hours, that sounds pretty tough to me. And again, no spot. Uh, goal return, one and a quarter miles. And uh, six contest minimum with a second place or better, but you got to win one. And uh, 6,000 points. Next slide. Bob, Bob yes. question. Yes. On that four hour slope duration, the alternative to that is not a four hour thermal duration flight, it's another one hour thermal duration, isn't it? No, it's a four hour. Yeah, I think it's a one hour. It's, it's a one, one hour. hour. It's one hour. You, one you, hour. you, you can repeat the thermal duration flight. On a different day. Okay. On a different day. I'm not an expert on this. Not what I gleaned out of this, what I, I was learning I was, as I was going on their website. So, I'll, okay. But. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's Because that four, okay. hour, that four hour thermal duration is, is more than you need for a level five. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but we're, we're trying to substitute for a slope flight. So, I, I don't, you, I'm sure you're right. But, and, uh, Two hour thermal duration, eight hour slope, no substitution for sure on this one. Goal and return six miles and uh, 12,000 points, including three wins. Next slide. That 
that's it. I should point out I, I believe LSF has developed a program now for DTD planes. Yeah. They did. It's, it's yeah. fairly new. I didn't go into that. Yeah, I, haven't, I haven't seen it either. Yeah. But I, they're I, into flying ETD. Uh, I think that just happened in the last few months. But, yeah, within yeah. the last year. Yeah. There's some interesting things that can happen when you're doing this. I was working on my, my slope flights and I was living in Texas. But we were flying off of dam because there was some place we had it. And one summer day we were standing on the dam and I was sloping, I had a wind free and I was sloping, I had wind free. And uh, shorts on and t shirt and I started to get a little tired. So I leaned back against the telephone pole and slid down the pole and sat on the ground. And if you know what fire ants are, the question is how fast did you land? I reached back to, I thought it was something. I scratch it, I reached back to scratch it, and I pulled my hand up, my own arm was full of fire. Oh, I handed my transmitter to a buddy and I jumped in the lake. <laughs> oh, oh, so yeah. cool. <laughs> End of the tent. Oh my god. Anyway, I have some um, LSF applications. Uh, take one from each group and pass it on. If you're interested, you don't have to take them. If you don't, I just tap them in there. Can you get them online? Yeah, you can get them online. Remember, silent, yeah. flight, yeah. dot org. No, no, obviously, no. So, thank you, Bob, and great. That's tough. Hey, Bob. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Thanks for